A bit of a bumpy start to a new trading week. Brian Jacobson, Chief Portfolio Strategist at Wells Fargo Advantage Funds, joins me. Brian, we started the week with another sell-off in China. Should we expect the volatility that we saw last week on Wall Street to continue over the next couple of days and weeks? I certainly hope that it's not as severe as what we saw last week, especially early in the week. But I do anticipate that we're going to see heightened volatility. When I've looked at uh, the 25 times that we've had uh, what are referred to as bull market corrections, so it's still a bull market, but you have a 10% or more decline in the markets. Typically, the next 20 days out, you have heightened volatility of around twice what you had going into the correction. So I think that investors and traders can brace themselves for for some of these bigger moves. Well, that will be interesting timing because 20 days out is about the time that the Federal Reserve has this very key September meeting. Over the weekend at Jackson Hole, we got some clues from the Fed Vice Chair, Stanley Fisher, who does see inflation moving higher. So should the markets think the Fed has a green light really now to raise rates? I think that the market participants should anticipate that the Fed might hike on September 17th. My expectation is that they will. It appears as though some of the market volatility that we've seen is beginning to dampen a little bit, uh, and the long-lasting effects of this aren't really going to be all that pronounced, and that's what would shift the Fed's liftoff date. So based on what Stanley Fisher said, he said that there's good reason to believe that inflation will rise back towards their target. Now, Good reasons isn't quite to where you would want it to be to be reasonably confident. That's the threshold that they're looking for, but it's getting close. And we're going to get a few more data releases between now and September 17th that could really reaffirm that they should lift off. Brian, how much of this is already priced into stocks given what we've seen in market action over the last week? That's the interesting thing about it. I think that in the bond market, we're seeing almost a bifurcation or it's split. On the long end of the yield curve, I don't think that it's really well positioned for a rate hike. So it doesn't look like anybody who's trading longer dated securities are expecting a rate hike. But yet on the shorter end of the yield curve, I think we've already seen a significant amount of the adjustment to a rate hike. So my expectation is that we're probably going to see the Fed hike and we could see outside sized moves in longer dated treasury securities like 10 years and out. But what about on the stock side, Brian? Is it priced in there? That's where it gets a little bit more complicated. I believe that some of the downdraft that we're experiencing today is based on expectations that the Fed might hike on September 17th. So I think it's beginning to price it in. Uh, the, I guess, nice thing about the market move that we saw last week and the week before is that from a valuation perspective, the stock market is in a much better place to absorb a rate hike. So maybe what we've already seen is people coming to grips with the fact that if it's not September, it's probably going to be October for a rate hike. So, Brian, what are you thinking about in terms of investments in this somewhat tricky environment? What sectors look more interesting to you now? Uh, I think that right now you sort of uh, live and die by beta, so to speak. Uh, it's uh, right now coming out of this recent volatility. I think small cap and mid cap stocks look attractively priced. But from a sector perspective, I think that you can really go with some of the cyclical names. Uh, technology is still one of my favorite areas, not necessarily the consumer facing technology, but more of the old school business to business technology. But my favorite place to be looking for opportunities is really in the emerging market. Markets. And that's the area of the market that has been in a bear market, uh, basically beginning all the way back in September. And that's where I think that you can really dig for some value. However, I would caution people to steer clear of maybe some of those more politically volatile areas like Brazil, uh, perhaps Turkey as well. Each one of them are going through some political upheavals right now that could really compromise their markets. Okay, Brian Jacobson, good to talk to you once again from Wells Fargo Advantage Funds. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Rhonda Schapler for The Street.